In this special feature episode, we hike up to one of the most beautiful locations in the New Zealand Southern Alps. We spend the night in the scenic Brewster Hut, joined by local wildlife overlooking the Mount Aspiry National Park. The following morning we hike further onto the spectacular Brewster Glacier and catch a jaw-dropping glimpse of one of our melting treasures. A must-do for any adventurers seeking to find New Zealand's hidden natural gems. Join us on this journey to the Brewster Hut and Glacier. Our adventure sets off from the resort town of Wanaka in the Otago district of New Zealand's South Island. We drive for about an hour along the stunning glacial lakes of Hawea and Wanaka until we reach the Makarora Valley. Nearby, the Haas Pass divides the Southern Alps within the Mount Aspiring National Park. Oh, that is cold. So we are about to start our trek up to the Brewster Hut. We're going to do an overnight journey up at the Brewster Hut and tomorrow morning we're gonna head up to the Brewster Glacier, one of the most beautiful sites here in the Mount Aspiring National Park. But to begin with, we're down here at Fantail Falls and as you can see, we are crossing through the river and it is cold. Freezing. Let's start the trail. We're gonna head into the forest now. So we have officially entered into the forest and we're leaving the Haast River behind us. 954 meters today, we're going up to the hut. It is supposed to get quite windy this afternoon. They said somewhere around 40 kilometer per hour gusts. So that's the reason why we're gonna wrap things up pretty early this afternoon and continue on right to the top tomorrow. But the hut is supposed to be really nice, so we're looking forward to it. Completed almost 400 meters of elevation. We're almost halfway up the mountain. However, we're only about a third of the way at the distance, so it should start to flatten out a bit here. We can finally feel some of those gusts of wind that were forecasted now up in these little bit more exposed areas. But we're coming up through these beach forests at the moment, filled with mountain and also silver beach, which are the ones that we see with the spots all over them, the white spots. We're in the Mount Aspiring National Park, which is actually part of a 2.6 billion hectare UNESCO World Heritage Area. Finally above the tree line and the views behind me are absolutely spectacular. It's taken us just under two and a half hours to reach up here now and we have just under an hour to go. So we've made our way up here about 700 meters and we have probably a little over 200 meters odd to go. So not too far, it's quite steep at the moment. Once we clear up above this ridge, it should start to get a little bit uh, smoother all the way up to the moment.
Following the tree line, we wander through alpine scrubland, which is endemic to this part of New Zealand. Here, the damp mosses cling to rocks and spiky bushes, giving way to phenomenal vistas of the surrounding alpine peaks. So we've made our way up onto the ridge now and you can see some of these steeper sort of mounds they're kind of blocking the hut so the hut is directly apparently above us up there not too far to go we should be up there in the next half an hour but if you see that area in the distance there where the sunlight is that's approximately where the glacier is that we'll be going to tomorrow the Brewster glacier and I'm guessing these cascades running down the mountain here these are all coming from the ice melt from the glacier to the Brewster Hut. Over here you can see the famous blue with the view. So good to get to the top. Time for a beer. Brewster Hut, we're having a little bit of relaxed time. Francesco is chilling out. Miranda's in the back there chasing some cheeky kids, although I feel like they'll be chasing her very shortly. having a few beers here, a couple of brewskis while we're uh, making some dinner. But the key is flying around above and this is pretty amazing. This is as good as it gets in the mountains. The key, like many of our native birds, is endemic to New Zealand, meaning it can only be found here on Earth. They are the world's only species of alpine or mountain parrots, which means they are generally found around the tops of mountain ranges. This guy here is sneaking up on me. The kea is a social species and are usually found in small groups. They also have a tendency to be curious around humans. This in part can be attributed to their intelligence, which is said to allow them a problem-solving capacity similar to that of a five-year-old. Due to this, they have been known to spend a lot of time around people and in turn have unfortunately been fed by those who are uninformed during these interactions. Because of this, in some circumstances, kids have been known to even drag traffic cones into the middle of a busy highway in hopes of a free meal. Feeding kids not only puts them in dangerous situations, but creates a dependency on people for food and also leads to many issues with malnutrition, as our food is not suitable to their natural diet. For these reasons, we advise not to feed any wild animals in general. The other reason they may seem so curious is due to the fact New Zealand was largely predator and mammal free before the arrival of humans, which means many of our native birds lack the fear instincts their counterparts in other places around the world would have. 
This has put many of our native birds in a threatened situation and has unfortunately led to the extinction of many endemic species. The kea is currently considered vulnerable, but there are some signs that conservation work has helped steady their numbers, which in some places have been on the rise. After watching the birds play in the deck of the Brewster Hut, we settle in for a spectacular sunset over the Southern Alps. This truly is one of the most spectacular places on Earth. We settle in for a round of cards and get an early night to prepare for the big day ahead. All right, so that was the Brewster Hut. What did you guys think? Oh, that was nice. That was actually one of my favorite hut stays. Yeah. Besides the sleeping, but <laughs> beautiful sunset, gorgeous Kias everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, I can't complain. All about those views and we are about to head up to the Brewster Glacier. So that's what this area is famous for. Most people come here not just for the hut, but for the glacier itself. So the, the point is to get up there and check out the glacier and see what all the fuss is about. So that was fun. We just spent basically an hour wasting our time up in the mountains up there. We followed this path, a very clearly defined path down from the Brewster Hut, when in actual fact, we should have been going on this path here. The path that we took pretty much led to nowhere. It's a little bit of a hill, maybe it's supposed to be a lookout, I don't know, but there is no clear signage. So if anybody's doing this trail, go from the Brewster Hut. Do not take the path to your left-hand side looking up towards the mountains, take the one to the right. So behind me here, we've got the Brewster Glacier and that's our goal for today, to reach this beautiful glacier up here. Reading a little bit of information down in the hut, it was saying that between 1977 and 2005, when they put up the information, the glacier unfortunately has retreated about 17%. And uh, visually looking at the photograph, you can see it's actually retreated a fair bit since then too. Partially that has to do with the global average temperature rising up. So in the last century or so, it's risen about 1%. Another part of it is the fact that the smaller the glacial mass gets, the faster it melts. Unfortunately, here in New Zealand, they estimate that most of our glaciers will be gone, or at least a fair chunk of them will be gone by the end of the century. It's kind of a, a bit of a privilege to be here and see these glaciers as they are, and it's something that we are really, really grateful for. So we're going to go down there and uh, make the most of it, do a little bit of exploring as well. So you can see the way that the uh, glaciers eroded away the landscape by looking at all these smooth rocks here. So up until recent history, this area would have been all part of that one big glacial mass. And it eventually would have, at some stage, made its way down into the valley below, probably during the last ice age between 10 and 20,000 years ago. It's pretty cool seeing the signs of it though.
So behind me here we have the Brewster Glacier. We've finally arrived. This is a really beautiful ice cave right here. The way glaciers are formed takes place over hundreds or even thousands of years when you have snow that compiles up year after year. And the amount of snow that piles up actually exceeds the amount of snow that uh, evaporates. Typically they start off in higher altitudes like where we are right now. When the snow compiles up it actually compresses and squeezes down the earlier snowpack from years prior. And that actually creates ice. What happens is it squeezes all the oxygen out, kind of like when you squeeze a snowball and it turns into a hard lump of rock, except you've got thousands of tons of pressure above you. It squeezes all the oxygen out. So it makes it clear ice. And when the sunlight comes through the ice, it refracts back. The same reason why these lakes that we see around us here are these beautiful turquoise blue colors in the sunlight. It's the only color that gets filtered out. So it is an optical illusion, refraction. There you go. So I'm gonna have a little bit of a walk up onto the glacier. It's pretty slippery actually. I'm on it. Oh, that's awesome. It's really awesome. Still chilled beer right now. It's cold. Oh yeah. So here I am doing something absolutely insane, which is the iceberg plunge. Oh, oh my god. That is cold. First thing I need afterwards. Cool. It kind of feels like a brain freeze right now. My head is just kind of aging. Let's go. Leaving the Brewster Hut now and we're making our descent down to the car park where we started yesterday. Brewster Hut lies pretty much halfway between the glacier and the car park at the bottom of the trail. So we're approximating about two and a half hours down to the bottom. The feeling of gratitude to be in the presence of such natural beauty is absolutely overwhelming. Coming up on our next episode, we explore one of the natural wonders of the world, New Zealand's Peel Peel Tahi or Milford Sound in the World Heritage listed Fiordland National Park. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed our content, please like and subscribe. And we'd love if you could leave us a comment letting us know what you've enjoyed or what you'd like to see more of. And help us grow our channel. Become part of the Global Travel Stories family by sharing with friends, family, or anyone you think would enjoy our content. Thanks, guys.